Okay, let's take a quick look at the Dean and Chair administrative roles that we have in Canvas and what that allows you to do and how you can use the system. So the first thing that you want to understand is within the Toro College and University system, each individual campus is its own sub-account. So as you can see here, we have a sub-account for Toro University, California. And within that sub-account, there are additional sub-accounts that are available. So in the case of TUC, we have a sub-account for the College of Education and Health Sciences, a sub-account for the College of Osteopathic Medicine, a sub-account for the College of Pharmacy. We've also created a, uh, a sub-account for blueprints, a sub-account for organizations, and a sub-account for uh, sandboxes. And even within those sub-accounts, in some cases, there are individual sub-accounts. So within the College of Education and Health Sciences, we've got an education one, a nursing one, a physician's assistance one, and a public health one. And if you were to click on any of these, you'll because you notice each of them kind of say that they have two or three sub-accounts within them. So when you click on those, the way in which the system has set this up is that there is a main sub-account that just says Mare Island and then there's another one that says Mare Island dash online and that's based upon whatever is entered into Banner so all of these sub-accounts if you will are pulling from Banner in terms of what it is that they're accessing so any course that is coded as being an online course in Banner would show up in the online section here Whatever is coded as a face-to-face -face or hybrid course in Banner would show up in the main account. Now, what we are able to do is, as a university, we are able to essentially grant individuals access, administrative access, to just a specific sub-account. And the way in which we do that is through what we call the dean or chair role. So you can be listed as the dean slash chair for the College of Education and Health Sciences. And if you are, what you have is you have access to everything that's in that account and flowing downstream. So it says that it has four sub-accounts, and here are the four sub-accounts, but it also gives you access to the three sub-accounts inside of education, the two sub-accounts inside of nursing, and so on. So depending upon where you are, and what you've been given access to will depend upon what you can see. So the first thing that you want to do is how do I access this information? Well, when you are in your dashboard, one of the things that you will notice is that in addition to all of the courses that you've been enrolled in as either a student or some sort of instructional role, now you will have this administrative badge over here or this administrative button over here on the left hand menu. And when you click on that, yours won't be as detailed as what mine is, but you will have access to this TUC colon Toro University California sub account. And when you click on that, it gives you a list of all of the courses, regardless of semester, that are in the sub account that you've been given access to. So in my case, I have access to every single Toro University California course that's been offered since the spring 18 semester. Now these don't show up in nice little tiles like they do on your dashboard. They'll show up in a list like this. Uh, what you can do is you can actually use the terms here to help you. So what you'll see is that here are all of the terms that are currently available inside of Canvas. And this isn't just for us. This is for all of the TCUS system. So you'll see TUCOM in New York actually has a semester that they've created called Video Library where they've got certain things. We have an MEDC archive as well as a, a public health archive here at TUC that we've created as semesters for students that needed access to course content, but those were students that took their courses when they were still in uh, Blackboard as opposed to Canvas. So you can use this as a way of helping you search for courses. So you can see there's future semesters, there's current semesters, and then there's past semesters here. Or you can just leave all terms. 
you'll note that the courses are done by both the course code from Banner as well as the SIS ID of that particular course. So in the case of the SIS ID, um, and for that matter, the Banner course ID, essentially you've got your semester code up front, then you've got some of the program code information, you've got the actual course number in there, and then you've got the CRN that's in there, among some other things. So that'll give you a sense as to how to find things. So what's going to be important is that you understand either the course number or the CRN. So if I was looking for a course like FOM, if I were to type in FOM, I wouldn't be able to find it. But if I were to type in MEDC-602, here are all of the instances of FOM that we've got here. So you've got the XList course, which is the actual course that was offered to students, and you can see it was published. And then you've got the B and the D and the E uh, versions of it as well. And you can see each of the versions of it. So we've done it in Fall 18, we've done it in Fall 19, plus there's an archive there for the class of 2020 and an archive for the class of 2021 because they would have taken the course in Blackboard. So we wanted to make sure that they continued to have the content. So that's how you would actually get at it and how you would be able to see or find the courses that you are looking for. Now in terms of what you can do in each of these courses, uh, what we have here, these are the um, some of the administrative account rules and you see I've blacked out some so that you can just look at the dean chair list. So a dean or a chair can view the course list which is what we were just doing there. They can view the statistics that are available for that course. So if we go back you'll see there's this little looks like a bar graph over here and if you were to click on that for any of the courses, it would give you statistics for that course. You'll also be able to view the statistics over here on the left-hand side with this statistics icon. As we scroll down a little bit more, you have the ability to look at the analytics as well as to see the announcements that have been posted. You have the ability to view the course content, not to add, edit, or delete, but just to view the course content. You have the ability to look at course usage reports. So this gives you the ability to see how much time students are spending in the course, um, what they're clicking on, those kinds of things. You can view discussions, but you can't post them. You can view the grades, but you can't actually edit grades. You can view all of the student groups that have been created, but notice that you can't add, edit, or delete them yourselves. You can view the submission logs for quizzes. You can read the SIS data, which in our case would be the T numbers that get associated with each of the student accounts. You can view a complete list of users, not just by course, but for the entire sub-account. So you would access that by clicking on this people icon here, uh, which would give you a complete list of all of the individuals that have access to a course in that sub-account. So that would include all faculty, staff, and students that are enrolled in any course that falls within the sub-account that you've been given access to. And that appears to be all of the things that you have access to. Now you'll notice that there are a lot of instructional activities that you don't have access to as a dean slash chair administrator. So you can't, for example, edit, add, or delete pages. You can't edit, add, or delete assessments. Um, we looked earlier and, and saw some of the other things that you know you couldn't post discussion forms. So or discussion items. What that means is that if you have an instructional role in the course you will still need to be added into the course either as a teacher when you were added in by the registrar in Banner 
or you'll need to be added in by the Canvas team in New York as a lecturer, designer plus, or designer to be able to get those instructional roles. Now, if you do have an instructional role in a course, you'll still be able to have the administrative tab there. So essentially, when you go into any course, it will essentially give you the permissions of both roles while you were in that course. So for example, if I go back to my dashboard, I've got this course here that I'm the instructor of record for coming up this spring um, in the School of Nursing, this Translational Research and Evidence-Based Practice course. So when I go in here, not only do I have the ability to do all of the instructional things, so I'll be able to go in and start to develop my template um, here and, and put you know the blueprint together. Um, I also have all of the administrative privileges over here that are consistent with my role in the TUC sub-account. And that'll be true for you as well. So that's just a quick overview of the Dean Chair administrative role in Canvas, what it allows you to see, as well as how to access those particular items.